former U.S. attorney from the Southern District of New York, Preet Bharara, penning an op-ed today with SEC member Robert Jackson, calling insider trading laws, quote, outdated and unclear. The op-ed announcing the creation of the Bharara Task Force on Insider Trading, which will propose reforms to laws intended to protect American investors. But many experts argue that changing the laws won't actually be effective in curbing nefarious trading deals. Joining us now to discuss this, uh, Rebecca Legrand, attorney at Legrand Law, and Jacob Frankel, attorney at Dixon Wright, and formerly from the SEC Division of Enforcement. Uh, very good afternoon to you both. Uh, Rebecca, do you agree with the overriding message in this op-ed? Uh, the message that the current laws are confusing, unclear, and outdated, I agree with. I don't agree with the fix. I don't think what we need is more regulations. I think existing insider trading laws uh, don't acknowledge the fact that arguably insider trading can be a good thing uh, and that there's no way to create complete informational parity. So I think the laws are outdated, unclear, unfair to defendants, but I don't think what we need is more of them. I think probably what we need is less. Jacob, what do you think we need on this front? I'm not really troubled by the laws that exist. We basically have almost 60 years of an evolution of the law of insider trading. Um, I think, you know, there, the, there is a criminal statute that applies where there is criminal intent involved. The SEC clearly has civil enforcement jurisdiction. And that is a, that is a distinction that easily has been made by regulators and, you know, and, and civil enforcers. Corporate counsel have been able to provide guidance to insiders as to where to draw the line. You know, the perfect example I use is, let's compare someone like Congressman Collins to Martha Stewart. I mean, Congressman Collins was a corporate insider. He was on notice. There was clarity as to what he could and could not do. You have a rule passed by the SEC, established by the SEC in 2000, setting forth, you know, that, you know, insider trading is a manipulative and deceptive device under the anti-fraud statute. The issue with Martha Stewart was a different one. Which, you know, which was whether Merrill Lynch would actually support the notion of whether she had material non-public information. There was always going to be room for interpretation. There was always going to be debate. And it's our lawyer, it's we as lawyers, it's our job to argue why the law does not apply to our client. But changing the law to provide clarity, I think there actually is sufficient clarity right now. Well, Rebecca, you, you mentioned that, you know, insider trading in theory could even be a good thing. That does sort of encapsulate this huge range of opinion about whether, in fact, it's even a crime or should be a crime with this idea that a fraud on the market is something that uh, sometimes prosecutors have to prove. So wouldn't a law help by just delineating exactly what is and what isn't prohibited? Well, I, I certainly think the law right now is unclear. I think the variety of decisions you've seen from circuit courts in recent years struggling with what is and is not sufficient to count as criminal insider trading shows that the law right now is unclear. So I, I do think it's unclear, and unclear in a way that's very unfair to corporate defendants. Remember, poor Martha Stewart went to prison. Uh, so if everyone can potentially be subject to decades in prison for conduct that no one's quite sure how to define, that's unfair and puts defendants in a really terrifying situation. But then the bigger question is, yes, why do we have these laws in the first place? Who are insider trading laws trying to protect? Do they do it successfully? And uh, what's the purpose of markets? The purpose of markets is so that people know, or well, so people can invest in companies, and you're hoping that you're investing based on uh, the markets having complete information. So there are real arguments and have been studies suggesting that when people with the most knowledge, insiders, trade, that the prices of those stocks are better, are closer to what is the real price. It can be a good thing. And it's, to my mind, what's most troubling about the current laws is it's, it is not like I, isn't there a difference between price discovery and insider trading? I, I don't understand how it can be a good thing if you're so, doing it in a sketchy way. Well, right. So look, if you're doing something sufficiently sketchy, if you're hacking into someone's computer system, for instance, that's sketchy and that's illegal. We've got plenty of laws on the books that deal with that. And for that matter, if you're breaching a confidentiality agreement or breaching a fiduciary duty to your company, there's plenty of ways to go after people who, who break those rules as well. But when you're talking about the markets as a whole, mm -hmm. uh, I want to know when I'm buying a stock that information's priced in already. If somebody knows that something bad's about to happen, I'd rather there be trading on it already because it's going to bring the price down and I'm going to be buying at a fair price. So it's not necessarily, a, a, there's not necessarily a victim here. 
Jacob, round things off for us. Uh, could things be refined a, a little bit further or is it just too complicated to, to take the further steps and it's better to leave things as they are? I think it's a mistake to take, the current, you know, take further steps. Basically, we are a common law society. In a civil law jurisdiction, which is, which is much of Europe, there there needs to be a precise statute that governs. Here we're in a society of judge-made laws. If you go back to the 1980s, insider trading was prosecuted under the mail and wire fraud statutes. We have sufficient statutes. Prosecutors and civil enforcers have developed protocols for applying them. I think we're okay where we are. Everything can be tweaked. But when you start trying to change the statutes to make them more clear, it ends up being far less clear.